Hey guys, what's up? This is The Art of Braum, Dark Works. And yeah, Dark Works with a thing uh, on the E. So that's not a works, that's a Weorks, I guess, right? So it's a Dark Weorks. <laughs> it's weird. But I like the cover of it, Elric of Mel Nubonet. One of the best, I think that's one of the best Elric pictures that I have seen in a while. I mean, it's pretty good. And this was done like a long time ago. This guy came out with these, I don't know when exactly. The book came out, what it says about the book is that it came out 19, 1997. Okay, so the foreword by Rick Berry was 1997. So it says 1990, yeah, published 1997. That's not bad. So that's years and years old, but hey, it's in good condition. Um, so what I like about Brahm is he does fantasy, it's really cool. He does monsters. Uh, he does a lot of these like cool action photo. That's actually really good. I mean, the quality of his art is, is, is up there. And he's one of the best artists. I think he's up there with like a lot of the good artists uh, in fantasy, Jim Burns, um, a lot of guys. Um, damn. And there's like, I like the pictures, they're compelling right and they're they're like they have they're impactful you know they have like more of an impact than anything else here's another elric that is freaking awesome i think that's another elric it looks like an elric white skin uh dragon helm dragon behind him dragon armor yeah that looks like that looks like elric it doesn't actually say what it is it's it's called it says bedeviled so I don't know if that's actually Elric or not, but it's very, very inspired by Elric if it isn't, because that's definitely Elric. The white hair, the red eyes, right? And then you got this, which kind of looks similar. Yeah. And so there's like other ones on the other side like that. That's pretty cool. And so, yeah, it's basically all like fantasy, fantasy art and fantasy stuff. And it's just like these sort of murals into fantasy, you know? The only thing is, oh, this is cool. And a wizard with a wizard staff fighting over like undead, like zombies or something with axes. Wait, that's crazy. Um, let's see, let me see what else is there. See, but the thing is, as you can see, like the poses on his characters are a little bit kind of stiff. They're just like standing up straight and, and they're not really posed in any way and that I feel like that's not only I feel like that's the drawback a little bit for me personally but that's his like mark that's his style like when you see a character that's well drawn but kind of stiff and standing up um that's Brom like you know it's a Brom picture because of the way that the characters are standing as you can see like there's more of that they're kind of standing straight and standing stiff. And you know that's a Brahm painting when you see that. This is kind of weird. It's kind of cool. Sort of like Mad Max, right? With the metal face mask and the, in the mechanical snake and whatever. Some of the stuff is really original and you don't really know what it is or what to, what to think about it or what to say about it or whatever. Like here, like this is like a post-apocalypse dude, sort of. As you can see, like the stances are just standing straight. It's like, they're like um, portraits more than anything else. They're not a lot of action. When it is action, it's action. It's like really good. See that? When it's action, it's, it's good. But then on the other one, it's like just standing straight. But I, I just think that that's his style. I mean, basically like nobody else does that. Like have like uh, kind of like the stiff kind of straight look to their characters. And when someone does draw something like that, um, they're always they're always quoted that, you know, they their, their work looks like Brahm or something like that, which is pretty much of a compliment, but because he's his stuff is very good and it's kind of like, it's fantasy, but it's also, um, it's also sci-fi and it's also very, very original. As you can see, like, it's not like a copy of anything. The guy really has 
you know, a very authentic mind of his own and does his own thing. This is kind of weird, like clown. I don't know. I don't know. Clowns are like, I don't know. It's nothing to them. You're not, they're not funny. I don't know what the point is with clowns. They never, I don't know. They don't make you laugh. They just like blow up balloons up. They do silly stuff. They're not really funny. They're not like stand-up comedians or something like that. Check that out. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And then there's like monster with a sort of like a gunfight at the monster corral. It's pretty cool. Um, damn. So the book is really good. I mean, a lot of good art in here. I haven't seen this in a while. I bought this a while ago. I mean, not 97. I don't know when I bought it, but definitely wasn't way back then. Um, it was, I don't know, 2000s, in the 2000s something. Um, not exactly sure, but when I saw like this kind of art, I said, this is cool. This is the kind of art I like. And you can see like a uh, female bodybuilder um, warrior. But well, that's pretty cool actually, because there's not a lot of female bodybuilder fantasy art to be seen. In fact, that's really rare to get to get that female bodybuilder pose. And then you can see like there's two poses. There's this one, which is a straight on pose, and there's that one. And that's pretty cool, you know. Uh, it just tells you the date of, I mean, this came out in 97. This was before female bodybuilding was that cool. Because now it's cool. Like now you go to the gym and you, you see women that look like that. Back in 97, not so much. And if that if the book came out in 97, then I guess the painting was 95, 96, maybe 97. But you could just see like the muscular uh, and, you know, female anatomy. It's just like, it wasn't common. This, is, this was definitely like, there wasn't, I mean, there were some bodybuilder females that looked like that, but most, most, most of them didn't. And sometimes there's like these, these are kind of cool. They're just monsters. What's cool about the other monsters is they're like part monster, part human. So there's a human part of that. And there's a lot of these compelling sort of like hero um, portraits of like heroes and stories and stuff like that and fantasy stories. There's a lot of these, this looks so much like the Mad Max aesthetic like this looks a lot like oh man that's cool it looks like just a lot like the mad max the war boys of um fury road kind of reminds me of that yeah and then there's like what is this there like people riding tigers and dinosaurs pretty cool yeah it's pretty nice and then there's like another one of these like kind of like um, landscape mode uh, paintings. These are cool, and I think these are these are all like uh, traditional. So this is all paint on on canvas. Pretty sure, barbarians. That's pretty cool. So he took the wo the woman uh, who was posing for him. Obviously, this was like he did a lot of photographs of her, and he put her in a lot of different paintings. I guess. And then you get like Conan the Barbarian looking guys, female Barbarian looking girl. And there's like this, some kind of like horse running into battle, guy with a horse running into battle. It's pretty cool because the book has just a lot of good content. Um, that So that's Lady Death. And that's from the comic Lady Death. So that is a main character of a comic series called Lady Death. And she looks just like that. She's wearing the same like bikini outfit and her skin is like bluish white. And uh, she's got a sight. It's freaking cool. And then there's like some of these, like maybe they're characters from other stories. I'm not really sure, but that one's called, this one's called Red Hand, which is the Lady Death one. And the other one is, oh no, wait a minute. The Red Hand is, the, is this one. Lady Death, yeah, it's called Lady Death. And Red Hand is the other one. 
where uh, she's got a red hand, <laughs> which is weird. Like the red hand is like, you don't notice the red hand right away. You notice like the rest of her outfit and how she looks. And by the way, yeah, she has a red hand and like, you don't actually see that, that that's not like the most predominant thing in the painting, which is interesting. There's like a uh, Civil War guy from the Civil War. And then we got uh, another um, sort of like a Western dude who's, uh, let me see, what is that? The Gunslinger, it's called. It's like this Western dude with like a skull face, sort of like a half, sort of like a skullish looking face, sort of like, yeah, it's crazy. Um, there's so much good stuff. The bat woman with her bats all over. That's cool. And that one is vexatious. I don't know what that means. What about? And there's like, this one is pretty cool. The mysterious female form girls. Um, that's cool. It's like blue in the background and just black. And like, you only see her and the gate behind her. It's pretty cool. It's good quality art. You know? Oh, wow. Frankenstein, I think. Yeah. Okay, there's there's this one, which is some dude with a sword. And there's, like, this Frankenstein dude also. Like, he looks like, yeah, he's definitely Frankenstein because he's all put together. You know? That's crazy looking. Or something like that. That's weird. So he, he does, like, a lot of, like, monsters as well as fantasy and sci-fi characters. Like this one, the Nosferatu, I think is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like a Nosferatu, he doesn't call him Nosferatu. You know, he called it, you know, Rat's Den. And then this one, yeah, is that crazy looking? Oh man, called that one Red Death. Jesus. But as you can see again, the real stiff, like they're jumping, but they don't, but they're really stiff and like not that flexible. Like they're jumping, but they look like they're, they're doing a stiff jump and they're not really that flexible. And, and whenever you see that, it's like, it's usually always Braum doing it. But then he'll come out with stuff like this, which is really cool. And then there's like, another one with this one and then she's where she also has a scythe but like a smaller one and that's kind of weird yeah and then there's like let me see yeah there's just like more of these um there's a i want there's like woman in the dark more of these like so he does these like single character posed um kind of paintings you know where you have like a difference in the character looks different you know the face looks different the costume looks different the colors are different the background is different but the poses are like the same you know this really like they're just these front frontal like poses where everyone is just posed very, very stiffly. And that's interesting. I was just wondering like if that's intentional or if he's just, that's just his style and that's just how he draws. And then it also like, when you go further into the book, it just like becomes this thing. And like, there's more, I guess like these don't have to have their own pages. Someone decided that they don't have to have their own pages, so. Some of them have that, but they're weird. Like here's a weird spider woman. And there's like some more crazy stuff. Jeez. And there's like more. So this is cool because they also have <clears throat> the sketches as well as the finished pieces. And it's always nice to look at the sketches because it's always nice to see how the artist, uh, how they started their painting and where the painting went, how the painting began, because it all began as, as a sketch. And then of course it gets fleshed out into that in a highly complicated procedure. 
<laughs> to, you know, think to, you know, technique and, you know, but uh, it all starts with like a little sketch, like a really simple sketch that takes like half an hour to make. And then there's this one and that, that, that painting takes hours to make like a long time to get it even close to being that good. There's that. It feels like more, most of the good stuff is in the front of the book. Cause like in this part of the book, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's good, but it's like, it's not even its own page. They have like multiple pictures on, you know, on, on multiple pages and stuff like that. Let me see if I can just find like the highlights from this so that I'll just show you the, the, the cool highlights. As you can see, like there's, there's drawings and things like that. There's a lot of different like cre creativity. There's a lot of different stuff. This is cool. You got like an uh, elf with a sword. It's pretty cool. Not a lot of going on in the background, but it's cool. It's all about the figure. Um, this is another Elric, yes. Yes, it is. I know it is. Um, it is another Elric. It is called Foul Irrelevance Lost. Is that an, okay, all right. Well, whatever, it looks like another Elric or an Elric inspired character with the white hair, the white skin. I don't, I don't see red eyes. Yet red eyes, I think. Well, it doesn't really, you can't really see his eyes because it's too small. Um, a dude with a bow and arrow. It's pretty cool. Interesting stuff. Um, more interesting, more Elric people. What's with the, all the albino art? Is that an Elric or what? Samael, 1995. <laughs> it's good, it looks cool. I think this would look really, really cool. I think these, this is the kind of art that looks good. It's probably intended to be of uh, the fine art. Like it would look good on like a large canvas, right? Cause it's like in the book, it's just like, you know, pages of, of, it's just illustration. But when you see it on a canvas and it's like five feet by seven feet or whatever, um, there's a huge difference. And you can see like how the light reflects off the oil paint. Uh, this is all oil paint, I think. It looks like all oil paint and stuff like that. There's a couple of things. I'm just gonna skip to the ones that are good, that I think are good. Like that's pretty cool. See like, but everyone is like, same pose, right? These similar kind of stiffish looking poses is the thing. And I think that like, if you like, I don't know, it's just my, my opinion, my critique that if he just like changes up the poses a little bit, which isn't hard, cause I could tell he uses models and he do, does ph photographs of models. If you would just let the models do poses and do like different pose and different things, um, I think a lot of his stuff would have more variety to it. Um, it's good, but the pose is not only like his signature style, but also like the repetitive thing. And I also think that it would look cooler if they did like more than just one kind of pose. And I, I you know, it's not that they don't do other poses. It's that this, just the straight front on kind of stiffish looking pose seems to be prevalent, seems to be the most common thing. It's still good. It's still very good, but I think I would love just more of a pose. I would love like a better, uh, just more of a pose, like a better pose. But some of the stuff is creepy. Like look at that. It looks like, and, you know, it's got these claws and it's all like spiky and claws and he's like flying into the air. This is the complete opposite of, of the, of the full on frontal pose. It's like the, 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 the jumping kind of like claw dude. And then of course there's like a bunch of just monsters. Um, see if there's anything good. More monsters, eh, more monsters. A lot of monsters. You could tell like some of the things they, they put on its own page. Cause I feel, I feel like they, they made it better in some of them. Like here's more of that pose that I'm talking about. It's good. I'm just saying that it's got, I mean, that the pose has been done. It's like, do a different pose. <laughs> Get do a different pose. Um, I mean, hey, the artist is who, you know, decides what the art looks like. So this says Dark Age on it. I don't know, this is this might be something else, maybe a game or something like that, or a different thing, but Dark Age is like, it looks like 
half mechanical and sort of crazy like masks and things like that. I don't know what the dark age this, you know, more of these like, like sort of mechanical and then medieval, like sci-fi, sci-fantasy uh, robots and stuff like that. Let me see what else. I'm just gonna skip through the ones, monsters, creepy monsters. And, God, man. Uh, cool girls, guns and stuff, whip. Jeez. Uh, more cool, cool girls, too. Yeah, he does these really good. These are really cool. Again, he goes back to, um, back to doing these full page things. I think, like, once it, once the thing has its full page, it belongs in a different... Let me just make sure that there's nothing in here that I missed. Huh. Yeah. Uh, little peace girl on the back, huh? And this is the uh, picture of the, of the artist. So this is the picture of the artist who did it. It's on the back of the sleeve. All in all, I think it's pretty good. It's a, I know this, this might come in, in, in hardcover. The soft cover is fine. It retains its quality really, really well. It's like high quality book and everything. It's totally cool. I think it's totally worth it. The dark works of Art, art of Brahm. Yeah. Um, I think it's totally worth it. I think it, it's considered science fiction. The book is science fiction, it, even though it's fantasy. Um, I think it's really good. I think his art is really good. I'd love to see more stuff by him because if this came out in 97, there's probably more updated stuff since it's like years later, you know, it's like over 20 years later. Um, and so, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see more stuff, but let me know what you guys think in the comments with what you thought of some of the art. Just thought I'd show it to you guys because it's pretty cool. It's Brom. It's cool. It's got to work on the front. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, and like and subscribe to the video and like and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in another video. Later.